Hello guys, Smart Polly here, and welcome to the Unreal Engine 4 Complete Beginner's Guide. Whether you are new or want to learn how to make games using the Unreal Engine, this is a great place to start. Today we will be learning how to download and install Unreal Engine, how to get up and running, as well as all the basic navigation controls and all the windows and layout. Throughout this course and in our next videos, we will learn the basics of blueprint, lighting, materials, landscapes, and more. So let's go ahead and get started. So first, we're going to go ahead and download Unreal Engine. To do that, you go to unrealengine.com, link in the description below. You can also click sign in right here to create an account. If you don't have an Epic Games account, you just click sign up. All right, then once you've logged in, click download, and it will go ahead and download the Epic installer. So you can go ahead and run that. And you're gonna choose your destination folder. You just leave it as it is, go ahead, and just click install. And you're gonna install Launcher Prerequisites. Once everything's finished installing, you go ahead and log into your Epic Games account. Okay, now once you're in the Epic Games launcher, you're just going to go to the Unreal Engine tab right here. Just left click on there, and then go to your library. So we're gonna go ahead and install engine. So go ahead and click that. And as you can see, it's gonna ask us to choose a install location. You can probably just leave this as it is, unless you want to install it to a different hard drive. But I'll just leave it as it is and click install and click yes. Okay, so as you can see here, it created the engine version right here. And it's just going to start installing and downloading Unreal Engine. So the download is about 11 gigabytes in size, um, but I think it expands to around 30 gigabytes on your hard drive. So just keep that in mind. All right, so lastly, it's just gonna ask you to make changes to this device, you just click yes. And then as you can see here, it's created a shortcut. And right here, the engine version 4.25.3. So we can launch the Unreal Engine by either running the shortcut that it created on our desktop, or we can launch it from clicking launch right here, or launch 4.25.3 up here. So just different options. So I'm just gonna hit launch. And as you can see, it's going to have us install the prerequisites. Okay, and then this will pop up, just click yes. Okay, and then it's going to ask you here to allow access to Windows uh, Defender. So let's click allow access. Okay, so also it looks like I need the .NET Framework 3.5. So just click download and install this feature. Okay, and then it's successfully installed. We can go ahead and close that. As you can see here, it has the Unreal Project Browser right here. I'm just gonna go ahead and restart this real quick by closing that and launching it right there. Okay, so as you can see here, this is the Unreal Project Browser. Basically, you're gonna see your recent projects right here. Uh, but since we just installed Unreal Engine, you're not going to see any projects. So you have a couple different options here. Uh, we're going to focus more on the games on this channel. Uh, but basically, you can go ahead and click Games and click Next. And you can see there are a couple of different templates that you can choose from. So you have first person, flying, puzzle, rolling, third person, uh, vehicle and so on. I'm just going to do a third person, so click next. And then here you have a few different project settings. We have Blueprint or C++. It really doesn't really matter which one you choose. You can switch between Blueprint and C++ in the same project. Okay, maximum quality. You really don't have to play with anything other than uh, with starter content or North Star content. 
by adding starter content, you're just going to get a bunch of different assets. Um, if you don't click starter content, you can always add it on later. So just don't worry about that. I'm going to go ahead and include starter content so you can see what it is. And then for your project name, you can name this whatever. I'll just leave it as my project. Okay, you can see the location of where it's going to be stored on your C drive. Then we'll just go ahead and create project. All right, so you can see here, we just launched Unreal Engine and we're in the third person example template that we just created. All right, so first of all, I'm gonna start uh, by explaining the layout. So first up right here on the top left, we have the file options, edit, window and help. Okay, so file, you have you know your basic open new level, create new level, and then your saves, all that stuff. And then we have edits, you have your preferences, project settings, and plugins. And then windows, you just have all your different windows, um, which I'll explain here in a second. And then help um, for if you want links to open up the documentation, the forms, and so on. Okay, so on the top toolbar right here, we have save. Uh, we have the different modes, you have the select mode, landscape, and so on. Um, these links are just to the content browser or marketplace. We have the editor settings. So stuff like the graphics quality within the editor. Blueprints, we have the level blueprint. Really, you won't really play around with that too much. Cinematics, for obviously adding cinematics. Uh, building, for building the lighting, all that stuff. Okay, and then play options. So to play the actual game, you'd hit uh, this play button. So as you can see, we can run around the scene. There's not really much to it. Okay, and then on the right over here, we have the world outliner. So I can drag this down, you can see a little bit more. So if I scroll through here, you can see we have everything on our scene that creates this level. So you can see stuff like the walls, the floors and everything, the lighting, the skylight, all that stuff. Basically all of the different uh, actors in our scene are all stored here in this world outliner. Okay, down here we have the details tab. So when we select an actor or an object in our level, you're going to see the details is going to pull up the details for that specific actor. So you can see we have the wall selected. We have the location, rotation, the scale of that wall. Okay, static mesh, all that stuff is right here. Down at the bottom here, we have the content browser. So this is basically the folder system of Unreal. So you're going to have all your game content, your models, your, all your meshes and stuff in here. And you can take stuff like your character and drag it into the scene. Or if you have, you know, like different meshes that you want to build your level with, you just drag them from your content browser into your scene. And you can create new folders and everything. All right. And then lastly, we have the place actors right here. So basically, this is like the basic actors that we have. So we have empty actor, empty character. This is kind of like the simplified version of the content browser, uh, but with very specific uh, actors. So we have things like cube, spear, cylinder, plane, trigger boxes, and trigger capsules. Then we have lights, so point lights, all that stuff. Cinematic, our cameras. Visual effects, so like post-processing. Geometry, so this is like basic geometry that you can play around and mess with. Volumes, and then all classes, which is just everything, so. And it's pretty straightforward to drag and drop. You just drag it and drop it right into your scene, just like so. Okay, so as for this viewport right here, that's what it's called, it's called the viewport. Uh, you have at the top left perspective, you can change the perspective to top, bottom, left, right, front, back. You can change the lit mode right here to unlit, brush wireframe, detail lighting, uh, so on, player collision. Usually you just leave it at lit. Okay, and then we have show right here, uh, show different things. Uh, post-processing and bloom just for the editor settings okay then over here we have the translate objects so as you can see I have this cube selected by just left clicking it 
so I can rotate it and scale it. Okay, and to do that, you can you can actually switch through these objects. So as you can see here, it says W to translate, E to rotate, and R to scale. So it might be a little backwards if you've used Blender before, if you're used to R being the rotate, but you press R to scale. So if you hold on left mouse button and click and drag it, you can see we can scale an object. We can hit W to transform it so we can move it upon each axis. And then E to rotate so we can grab whichever axis we want and rotate it. All right, and one thing I want to mention is you can change the snapping values. So for example, I can only rotate it here 10 degrees. Say if I wanted to change that down to 5 degrees, half of that. Or if I wanted to change that up to 90 degrees, so I can snap it 90 degrees. Okay, same goes for grid snapping values. So if I want to move it with more fidelity, I can drag it like that. Okay, and if I want it 100 grid snapping, you can see the snapping is more clean. And then we have scaling, so we can scale it have a lot of control over the scale, or we can have it uh, have clean snapping like so. Okay, and you can control Z to undo. All right, and basic navigation within the scene to pan, you hold down the middle mouse button, you can pan up and down. To move your camera around, you just hold down the right mouse button. To move forward, up and down, you just WASD and you hold down the right mouse button to kind of navigate with your camera while pressing W on your keyboard to move forward. Okay, so if you're using Mac, mice don't have like right click or something, so just keep that in mind. You're gonna be needing to use the right click to navigate the camera. A few important hotkeys to note is that you can select an object and click F to focus. So if you're lost in your scene, you can always just select an object in your world outliner and focus back onto it, like so, by pressing F key. Another thing I want to mention is that you can change your camera speed. So as you can see here, we're moving around the scene. We can increase it if we're working with a large uh, scene and we want to move faster or if we're working with the really small up close details we can change our camera speed down to two and if you want it to go a little bit faster you can use a scroll mouse button to kind of speed it up a little bit okay and so a few more hotkeys are the alt key so if you hold on alt and left click on this it's going to duplicate it Okay, another cool hotkey is if you hold down shift and you drag this, you're going to have your camera snapped to this object while you move it. Okay, so shift and alt. Shift and alt. Okay. So you can delete objects in your scene by just selecting them and hitting the delete key. So we can go ahead and go to our content browser. and I'm going to explain a little bit more. So in our content browser, uh, we added the starter content. And if you haven't added it at the very beginning, uh, don't worry, because you can always go to add new, feature or content pack, and go to content packs, and click starter content and add that to your project, okay? So you don't have to go back and recreate a new project or anything like that. You can always add it later. So right here into our content folder, we have starter content. So you can see we have a bunch of different folders here. We go into props. So you can see we have various different props we can mess around with. So if we drag, say, this chair into our scene, you can see we just got a simple chair. So you can very easily drag some props in your scene and rotate it by pressing E to rotate, W to transform, R to scale. So just go ahead and mess around with some of these props. You can go ahead and just drag them around your scene and create a little level. All right, and to play your scene again, you just press play. And as you can see, we're running through our little level that we just made. 
So these are basically just static meshes. They don't really do anything to our scene other than build it, really. Um, they don't really have any interaction, so that's why they are static. As you can see here, they're all SM underscore lamp. Static mesh is what it stands for. And static meshes can be created either in 3D software, like Blender, Maya, 3ds Max, or you can get them and download them from online, like just 3D models, and import it into your project. So in your content browser, uh, you also have in the starter content textures. So you have like things like grass textures, rock textures, wood, all that stuff. Um, these are just 2D textures. Um, in Unreal Engine, they have a material system. So if you go in the starter content materials, you're going to see all these different materials. To apply a material to an object is as simple as selecting that object and either dragging and dropping the material onto it or just change, selecting the object and changing the material right here by dragging and dropping the material onto there. Okay, so it's a really simple way to apply materials. One more thing I want to add real quick is that you're going to see this lighting needs to be rebuilt. Uh, this basically means that you just have to go right here and build lighting only uh, because right now the lighting in the scene is set to static which means that you have to build it every time you drag a new actor into the scene and move it around. Usually you bake your lighting at the very end like after you're done working with your scene or if you're working with a game where you want to have dynamic lighting like say a day and night cycle or if you want the uh, lighting to change or perhaps you're just kind of messing around with the engine you don't care uh, you can always disable that by changing your lighting your light source right here to select it scroll down right here to movable and you're gonna see that goes away alright and you can also do this for your skylight and set that to movable just like so so anyways that's pretty much the bare basics of Unreal Engine um, all the different windows and what everything does in our next few tutorials we're going to go get into the nitty-gritty of the engine how to create materials how to import assets how to create landscapes blueprint and all sorts of things so guys go ahead and play around with the engine uh, create your own little level just experiment dragging and dropping assets and navigating through your level and kind of just familiarize yourself with the engine it will help you learn and if you have any questions just leave them down in the comments down below or if there's anything in particular you want me to cover in this unreal engine 4 basics series uh, just leave it down in the comments down below. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoy the video and I'll see you guys in the next one.